Hey guys, today we're going to be showing you how to bench test pretty much any starter. So when we test the starter, we want the armature here to pop out and rotate. And this is a 12 volt starter. It's going to have a negative or ground, a positive, and a signal wire. And all starters have these three things and you need to locate them. Now I want to get into batteries here for a real quick second. Uh, when you disconnect them, all you have to do is disconnect the negatives. And I usually put these black caps on, which you get whenever you get new batteries. Just keep those. You don't have to pull all the leads off. You don't have to pull the positives, everything. Just pull the negatives. It makes it a lot easier. So here's the starter. Um, and what we're going to be using is a jumper box to test it with. You Typically, if you can, you don't want to use the batteries off of the unit to test the starter because if the batteries are bad, you won't know that the starter is bad because you have to have a good battery source to test the starter. So what we're going to do is, since I know my jumper box is good, we're going to hook one lead up to the negative terminal, one to the positive, and then the signal wire needs a 12 volt source. That's what tells the starter to actuate. So what we're going to do is we're going to jump the positive to the signal wire. And I use this Matco starter switch. You can actually use this if it's on the vehicle to test it. But if you have a battery or lead problem, you won't know it. So that's why it's good to pull it off. So we're going to hook one end of the lead to the signal wire and one end to the positive. And then if the starter's working properly, when I push the button, it should pop out and rotate. So look at that. It tests good. That's what you want it to do. You want it to pop out like that and rotate. So this starter tests good. And that is how you bench test a starter. So we bench tested that starter and it tested good, right? Now that does not 100% guarantee that that starter is not the problem if you're having a starting issue. Uh, probably 95% of the time, if it tests good, it's going to be good. But this starter here, after I tested it, I put it back on the RV, and it did the same thing. It clicked. It just clicks when it's in the unit. Now, as you can see in the video, when you apply power to it with a known good battery source, it kicks in and spins. So I tested the batteries, they tested good, I tested the leads, I did a voltage drop test to the starter while cranking, or attempting to crank, and it just clicked. And uh, it was driving me insane because it bench tested fine. Well, the difference is, when you're bench testing it, you're not really putting it under a load, you're just making sure it can spin. That doesn't mean it will actually produce enough torque to turn the engine over. Luckily, there was a cord engine with the same starter next to this unit I was working on. So I swapped starters out and that starter was actually bad even though it tested good. So if you're pulling your hair out thinking you have a starter issue, it tests good um, and everything else seems to be okay, just because it tested good on the bench doesn't mean it can actually move an engine enough to, uh, to start it because it can spin freely doesn't mean it's producing torque. Now another thing is some starters don't have a negative terminal. Uh, those would be grounded through the case of the starter. So that negative, the black lead that I hooked up, instead of going to the terminal, would actually just go to the case of the starter itself. Um, and that's really the only notes I had on this video. All right, I, uh, if you have any other questions, you can just leave them in the comment section on this video, and I'll uh, respond as soon as I can. All right, thanks.